Hi, let's take a deeper look at Project Sam's Symphobia 2's update. Oh, the camera! Hi there, this is Sam with Second Tier of Sound. Really nice to see you here. If you're new here, I create videos on how to orchestrate within a DAW, but also how to get deeper into VST instruments and plugins and really master them. If that interests you, grab subscribe. Anyway, a few weeks ago I talked about Symphobia, their update. And now they have also made an update to the Symphobia 2. So let's get into that. So Symphobia 2 made by Project Sam is quite a unique library. It's perhaps not an all-rounder, but more geared towards specific genres and sound. But the sound is really good. Let's take a look. So let's take a deeper look into the interface, see how it works and maybe some tips, but also to see the difference between Symphobia 1 and 2. And as you can see, it looks almost exactly the same as Symphobia 1. The 2 is pretty much the difference there. So let's go back here and you can either click here or in library and you will see everything laid out for you. Much, much easier to find what you want. And you can even click here to listen to what they sound like before you load them. So the new thing here is Legados, which is really, really welcome. And it also has chords and a few other things that we're going to take a look at. So let's start with solo flute here. For example, you actually get Legato and Staccato. What's new here is that you also have different Legato modes. You can now switch to polyphonic mode as well, which is really welcome. Also a new thing, if you go into the cogwheel for that instrument, is that you can now change automatic Legato speed. If you unclick that one and go back, you can now change what kind of legato speed you want, natural or faster. I tend to go with the automatic one because I find it's easier, you know. But if you want a specific sound, that might be a good thing to do. One thing I always do, and it's the same with Symphobia 1, is that in settings, I go in and click Send Expression CC11 to Volume because then I have more control over the dynamics. The module does a good job and it sounds very good, but I find sometimes I want to go with lower or a little bit higher. And then it's great to have that as an addition. Then it's pretty much the same as before. But one thing I've noticed, I'm going to load a different instrument here, is that if I go string section, for example, and go into a spiegato map, I now have trigger node down here in the mapping. Did not see that in Symphobia 1 unless I missed it, which means you can get the sample to trigger on key down when I press the key or when I release the key or key up and down, so you get a sort of automatic doubling there if you want to. Very, very effective to do fast repetition. Otherwise, it works the same, and if you want to know more how that works, then check out my Symphobia 1 video. We have FX, which is, again, really, really great. I'll go over this in another video, but I just wanted to say it's so fast to just change the sound with the master EQ a little bit if you want it to sound differently, or you can put on a limiter, you have stereo image, all that. It's really, really welcome. You can obviously work with your own tools, but this is just so fast. And that's why Symphobia is so great. You can create a really, really quick sound. You just tweak it and you're pretty much done. And I really love that. So let's take a look at the sounds. Let's start with the Legato section. I think that's the one that most people want to know about because that is the newest thing. Symphobia 1 doesn't have Legato. Horns and trombones. <laughs> Really beautiful sound, and, and that legato really makes it much more impactful. Also has a staccato here, so. So you can obviously play chords when you have the staccato, but not when you have the legato, obviously. 
Okay, so let's take a look at horns, violins, and violas, and this is really, really useful. You might not always hear the violin, you might not think about it, but it adds an extra layer. And a lot of these patches are really just sort of ready mixed for you and it just adds exactly what you need. You know, a lot of people don't always think about, you know, layering up certain sounds to get that thicker sound and now you have one right here. Okay, let's take a look at Celli Contrabasses. That's probably one of my favorite. This one is so cool. It's just so playable. And even the staccato, I love this one. And it kind of almost works as legato if you play it quickly. So it's really, really nice. I know Symphobia 1 has sort of this patch a little bit differently. And it also has one when they add the synth bass underneath. So that one's really cool. The main difference here is that I think it sounds just a little bit better and also that it has the legato. Okay, so let's see what else we have. We have violins and octaves, and this is really for those, I would say, dramatic, romantic, heartbroken kind of stuff. All right, then solo flute, and I really like this one. It's probably one of the most emotional solo flutes I've heard there. It's not great for fast passages, but it has really, really beautiful sound. It's just instant inspiration for me, and it has a staccato as well. Couldn't help myself there. Also works really nicely. All right, let's see what else do we have. Solo horn. Yeah, I had to play major there, otherwise maybe they'll sue me, I don't know. Anyway, very, very nice solo horn. Again, maybe not for fast passages, but really perfect with that melodic, nice uh, emotional sound. Very, very nice. And then we have bass clarinet and bassoon, which is sort of the equivalent of the string bass. Just lovely, that bass sound there. I love that one. Really, really effective. You can do just that patch on its own and you have instant magic, seriously. And then let's try bassoons in violoncelli. And again, you can hear all these patches are really good on their own. They're created for a purpose. They're great for sort of cues in a movie. So they're just, just out of the box, fantastic. Solo low whistle. And it has a few tricks there in the scripting, so it does sound more like a real person playing it. I really like what they've done there. And the same thing with the Julian pipes. Right, very, very nice. In uh, Symphobia 1, you have sort of pre-recorded uh, phrases that works really well, but now you have a little bit more control. So let's take a look at some of the other sections. Strings I want to show because it's a little bit different in Symphobia 1. It still had this great sustain patch.
So instant magic, seriously, it's it's a, one of those great simple string patches. I don't know what they did with Project Sam. There are string libraries out there that are in a way better, more complicated, but this is a small little patch and it sounds really good directly. And they also have now Spiccato here. My only critique here a little bit is that the round robins get a little bit obvious after a few times, but otherwise it's a great sound, really truly is. Then trills, but what they have added now is some espressivo patches here. So isn't that great? I mean, I love it. It's just instant magic, and you don't have to do anything with the model. It's sort of recorded in the patch. The only thing I think is missing here is that they don't have any tempo change here. You can't change the length of these. They have a slow and a fast. And I know they didn't used to do that, but they have updated the engine a little bit. So for example, this one, the crescendo, you can now change. You can change to downbeat or with beats. So I can have, for example, let's have one beat. Or let's go a little bit higher up. So you can now follow your doll. And this is really, really, really helpful. Again, I don't know why they didn't do that with Espressivo. I do know that when you take it too far, it sounds garbled and weird. You have to do it within reason, right? Then chords, it's just a bunch of effects. Really, really nice. And then some effects. And they have tons. <laughs> it's a hard to go through all of them. Then we have brass, and it's also a little bit different here. They don't have the big sections as you use in, to do in Symphobia 1, but more specific needs. For example, horns and trombones. I love this one. Again, these are sort of, I would say, almost performance patches that really does its job. It's ready to go. You just need that quality, and you just... Mm. And it's there. And you also have this one, I, I, I like this one, Cliffhanger. And I did the crescendo with the mod wheel, but if you don't want to, you can just hit a key. So if you want the ending to a scene, for example, it's just perfect, you know? You can see this is really a, a sketch writer's dream or somebody who writes a lot of cue music. It just works excellent for that. And let's say woodwinds, they have some a lot of more legato sections, and I've tried some before, but they also have flutes and piccolo here, so. And a staccato. All right, some trills, clusters, and effects, and there are a lot of them. Just want to show a little bit. Very, very good. Then we have mixed ensembles, and this is one of the great things about Symphobia 2, because it's just so much fun. I'm going to show you what I mean. And I also want to say, if you don't have Symphobia 2 and you might have Symphobia 1, you kind of sort of can almost create this with stacking the instruments in Symphobia 1, so you're not completely missing. But you should get both, really. Anyway, strings and woodwinds here. We just have different sounds. And one of my favorite, high sordino and high winds. Yeah, you can just hold those chords forever. Beautiful, that mixture of the flute and the violin together. And then they have high staccato and xylophone. Very nice for that high, intensive, high-pitched sound. Okay, so what else do we have here? Mixed orchestra. This is really the most fun one because you kind of sort of have the whole orchestra at your hands. First, we have octaves. You get extra sort of percussive piano and some kind of drum. and then drums down here. So I guess you could do... So I'm 
like that, or just big chords. Right. So instant inspiration. If you just want to, okay, I want to try out some chords here in a big orchestra. You can just do it within minutes, really like that. It's just really inspiring. And then we have sort of the same thing, but more in staccato. And I, this is fun. So depending on how hard you hit, you get different sounds. So if you go very soft. And if you press a little harder. So it's just really, really fun to play with. I know it's just shorts, but you can get so much out of this one. And when I started doing this, I worked a lot with Symphobia too, many, many years ago. And I just, it was one of the most, seriously, one of the most inspiring tools I've ever worked with. And then we have a different version of that, which has a little bit different uh, instrumentation. All right. And then sustain wide octaves. Yeah, again, what else do you need? It's, it's done for you. And then we have some hits and stabs. You know, for when the scary monsters come in. Rips and swirls. And then chords. Some people call this cheating. I call it, well, fast workflow. So you could just press here for major chords. Or for a minor. So you get sort of two different positions. Then minor. These are all just versions of that. So this one has a symbol. This one is a built-in sforzando, crescendo. And then we have the chords a diminuendo as well, which is just a long drawn out thing. But it sounds really good. And then the repetition. Right, now I think there's one more down here hiding. Staccato, yeah. All right, then dreamy textures. These are really great, but I guess they get recognized fairly quickly. That's the only problem. But if you put them in the background, it can be really nice. And they can really fatten up your orchestra quite a bit. Then we have chords. And this is really nice because now you have a brass section playing the chords the, for you. And you have first major. And then the same minor. All keys, obviously. But then also diminished. And what's really good is that they added here top notes. So you can, for example, press C. And then add a six. And an, or a seven or a nine. So you can create chords very quickly there. Do you want to say one thing though? It doesn't always tune so well because it's difficult for real performance to make sure that the tuning always work in every instance. But in most cases it works fine. And then you have staccato, which I also like. Very nice. So you don't have to create that yourself. You just hit the keys and it sounds really, really good. And we have the same with strings, but this case is actually a trio. It's sort of a quart, well, trio, not a whole orchestra, so you get a little different sound. And it works quite well, but I like the staccato the best. Major, minor, and diminished. So you get quite a bit there. You can always choose different chords and have different bass notes so you get more colors that way.
And then lastly, we have the winds, which is also very useful because it's hard time sometimes to get a real good performance out of an ensemble. So. That's the trick there. You just take the diminished patch and you have some kind of Star Wars theme instantly, you know, and staccato. All right. Okay. And then a miscellaneous it has a concert hall in it. I, I like that sound somehow. <laughs> it gives me peace. But I don't know if you're going to use it so much in your songs. And then we have also the dystopia down here. And these are all the fun sounds that you can use. And depending on how you hit, you get different effects, right? There are tons of them. Uh... That are really good to create a scene, obviously. And let's try this. Uh, see if I can find the chainsaw. Yeah, that's what it is. If you want to make that kind of movie. I just find that more of a joke, but I, I really, I, I like it. Trailer hits. And they have lots of them, really. So you can you can play all day if you really like this. And you can see there are tons of them. And if you don't know what to choose, you can always click the button here, you know, to see what they do. Tutti hits. Right, let's try one more. Stingers, drones and risers. Everything for a scary movie, you've got it. Now let's go into the Multis and they work the same as in Symphobia 1, but I really want to show you this ones because they're incredibly inspiring and you really should take advantage of them. Let's take a look at them now. Some of these patches are more composing tools and some of them are just more of effects, but still very effective. For example, if you take this one, you can just hit some keys and you got. Let's uh, try another one, for example, Dead Stop. <clears throat> yes, <laughs> scared almost me a little bit there. But you have a few different of those. Ghosting Closet. I really like this one, Legato Super Stack, because it's just a perfect cue of especially whodunit movies or what happened or the end, you know, just play, seriously, anything. So it's basically legatos combined and you can just go from... And 
I'm telling you, almost any notes work. If it's more, you know, weird stuff, then it's better. <laughs> Lovely. It's just, it's really great. And you also have, you know, the whole orchestra if you want to play nice legato lines, obviously. But it's just, yeah, I really like that one. So what do I think about Symphobia 2 when... Which one should you get? I mean, Symphobia 1 or 2? Let's talk about Symphobia 2 first. Do I like it? Yes, I absolutely love it, in fact. But that is maybe because I started out with this library many years ago, and it's one of the few libraries that you really, really get inspiration from. You just load something up and instantly you have magic. And it sounds good. It's pre-mixed so well, you can just tweak it a little bit if you want to. And yeah, very fast, instant results. So it's a big recommend. I, I absolutely love it. I do want to say, though, that what is not working so well is that it's a very specific sound. It's a symphonic sound, but it's also towards certain styles of music. It may be horror movies, adventure movies, big Hollywood sound. You can still create quite a big, interesting orchestral pieces with this, as I showed you, but you don't have the same control as, for example, an orchestral library as BBC or Opus, obviously. You don't have control of individual instruments and ranges. So that's something to keep in mind. The sound you've heard in these demos, more or less, is pretty much the sound you're gonna get. You might be able to tweak something else, obviously, but it's not a full, complete library. So what is the difference then between one and two? Well, they are very similar in terms of what they can do and the sound, but the main difference is that Symphobia 2, I think, is upgraded in sound quality. At least, at least it sounds like that to me, and it's a bigger library to download, so I think they up that a little bit. And it has Legato, Symphobia 2 has Legato, Symphobia 1 does not. And there are a few patches, like the Ensemble 1 and chord patches that's like, that only exist in Symphobia 2. So, which one should you get? Well, Symphobia 1 is more the complete library. It's still not a BBC or Opus, but you have more control over sections, you have more of the patches you might need to create different sounds. While Symphobia 2 is sort of an upgrade in terms of the patches you didn't have before and legados and fun sounds and extras but even more it's sort of more the pre-packaged sound you just load a patch and it really sounds good immediately a lot of doubled or tripled instruments in the patch that creates that great big sound that you might do anyway let's say if you had a bbc you might just load those three patches together anyway to get that big sound so symphobia one is more of that quick orchestral, more complete, a little bit more control over your library. Not as much as the BBC or Opus, but still more control of the articulations. You can do more what you want and need. While Symphobia 2 is sort of the, the turbo version of that. It has legatos, it sounds a little bit better, it has great performance patches that really sounds great out of the box. And I think it's more inspirational. It just sounds better, especially the multis. So which one should you get? Well, Symphobia 1, again, if you need that just orchestral library that you want quick results out of. Symphobia 2, an inspirational tool that even goes up to production quality at times. I would say get both if you can afford it, obviously. But now, hopefully, you know a little bit more which one suits you, if any of them. So I hope this video really helps you understanding what Symphobia 1 and 2 is all about and which one you should get, if any. I do want to say I had a lots of fun creating this video and creating these songs for you. And I do want to shout out a big thank you to Project Sam who gave me this library so I can try them out for you. It's a great recommend, so please check them out if you can. Anyway, that's been it for this time. If you enjoyed this video, you can always hit the like and button and perhaps subscribe or even become a patron so you can support me creating more videos like this. There are more videos coming. I'm having a little bit of a backlog because of internet problems, but hopefully you will get more videos from me soon. And until then, I hope you have a great time. Take lots of care.